Okay, so today's um, assignments are going to be this Monday, October 5th, New Zealand's on Slavery. So you guys can go ahead and open that one up. And this is going to be another Kami assign assignment similar to what we've done before. So um, just like we did before, you're going to um, take notes on the document in here. You know what, I'm gonna change one thing on this really quickly so that everybody can actually open it in a new window because it's a little bit easier to use that way. So bear with me just a second. Okay, so now you should have it so we can open in a new window. So the directions for this assignment are pretty similar to what we've done before. So we're going to highlight important concepts information in yellow. We're going to highlight unfamiliar vocabulary in red. And then we're going to take notes and comments along the side. Okay. So what you're going to be turning in today is pretty much the same thing. So if you're at home, let's please make sure that you're sitting up so that we are not going to be falling asleep in class. Okay. So my expectation is if you guys are in virtual class, you guys are behaving like you would in normal class, which usually doesn't mean laying down. Brinley, that message was for you. So please sit up so that I don't have to send another email to your parents about you sleeping during class. Okay, so hopefully everybody's got this assignment pulled up. Give us about 20 more seconds to get caught up with where I am. If you need help, please let me know. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we have two, oh no, it loaded the wrong one. I don't know why it did this again for me. Okay, you guys are gonna have to hold on one second here while I try and fix this. Okay, so if we take a look at this new Zella, what we are gonna do is we're gonna highlight important concepts in yellow will highlight stuff that we, vocabulary we do not recognize in red. And then we're gonna take some notes on it. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. America's early economy was built on cotton and slavery. With its farms and plantations, all right, let's define this word as our first word. So I'm gonna highlight it red. Let's see if I can change this to red. Red. And remember, plantations are just large scale commercial farms. So they're the very large farms that people are going to be using to um, grow cash crops. So with its farms and plantations, America's Southern states became an economic engine of the early United States. Human slavery was the engine's fuel. All right, so right there, we've got something pretty important, right? It's telling us human slavery was the engine's fuel. So human slavery is what these plantations are using to produce their crops, right? And we know that from just from what we've already talked about, but that's gonna be a very important fact going forward. The economy built on enslaved people had benefited many wealthy Americans. By 1860, the South was producing 75% of the world's cotton. There were more millionaires per capita in the Mississippi River Valley than anywhere in the nation. So re let's read that sentence again. That's pretty crazy. By the 1860s, the South was producing 75% of the world's cotton. There were more millionaires per capita in the Mississippi River Valley than anywhere in the nation. Much of their wealth depended on the free labor of enslaved black people. Slavery would eventually lead to the most destructive war in U.S. history. Okay, so I think this is a pretty important thing right here, right? Um, I'm gonna say both this, the South, the South was producing 75% of the world's cotton and there were more millionaires per capita in the Mississippi River Valley than anywhere in the nation. So remember when we're gonna take a note, you can go ahead and click on it and then click that little comment section. 
And then you're going to go ahead and, and like, well, let's take a note. So um, the South is producing most of the world's cotton and many people are becoming very wealthy because of this, right? So what we have happening in the United States as this is going on is cotton becomes more and more important to the world's economy. And we're shipping that cotton to England where it's made into clothes and other finished textiles. But what's happening here in the United States is that a small group of people are becoming very wealthy because of all of the free labor that they're getting from the slaves. And most of those people are concentrated in the deep south. All right. So you guys should have a note here and we've already got a couple of highlights. Building a nation required lots of labor. Building a new empire in North America required a lot of workers. For much of the 1600s, American colonies had mostly agricultural economies. And agricultural economies, this is going to mean that people are producing things by um, farm, right? So most of the products that is being produced in the United States are being produced on farms. That's what an agricultural economy is. Much of the labor was provided by indentured servants. These servants were poor, unemployed laborers, mostly from England and Scotland. In exchange for their work, these servants received food and shelter. Sometimes they learned a trade. Indentured servants earned their freedom over time. This was not true for enslaved people. By, the 18, six, by 1860, fewer indentured workers were coming from Britain. Increasingly, big planters replaced them with enslaved people. So we start to see a change in the 1860s, switching from indentured servants to enslaved people. All right, so let's highlight that, and I'm gonna put a comment in there too, saying, by the 1860s, we see less indentured servants and more enslaved people coming to the U.S. And that's going to be a big shift, really, by 1680. Remember, we're still in the early days of America here. This is about 100 years before we even become a country. And we are seeing a very big push towards slavery in the United States. And we're going to see that increase over the next um, 200 years or so until the Civil War. Okay. Southern colonies had a mild climate and much available land. Landowners developed large farms. These were called plantations. They grew cash crops like rice, tobacco, and sugarcane. But these types of farms needed many, lab many farm laborers, so wealthy planters turned to slave traders. They imported more and more kidnapped Africans to the colonies. A new big business in the U.S. was born, the trade in humans. At the auctions of enslaved people, black people were treated like animals. They were sold to the highest bidder. By the mid-19th century in the United States, an able-bodied enslaved man or woman was worth $1,200 to $1,500. And that, that's a lot of money for the 1800s, okay? So let's go ahead and highlight this. And I'm going to add another comment in here too. I'm going to say the trade in enslaved people becomes big business in the U.S. as this is an important labor source for farms. Um, I'm just going to say plantations because really we're talking about plantations. Okay, so the comment I made is the trade in enslaved people becomes big business in the U.S. as this is an important labor source for plantations. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a minute or two to write this one down, okay?
Okay, so let's keep going. The debate over slavery begins. Wealthy Southerners saw slavery as essential to their economy. In the summer of 1787, delegates to the Constitutional Convention met in Philadelphia. They argued bitterly over slavery. Still, they agreed about its economic value. At the time, there were nearly 700,000 enslaved black people living and working in the United States. Okay, so this is going to become something that's really important for us. So let's go ahead and highlight it. But wealthy Southerners saw slavery as essential to their economy. And if you remember back, right, we said that there was a few, like there were more millionaires in the Mississippi River Valley than anywhere else in the world during this time period. And you can imagine that all of these really wealthy people who are profiting off enslaving other human beings they're not really going to want to get to away with something that's going to cost them a lot of money, right? So this is an important thing for us to remember. It's also important to note that there's not like a ton of slaveholders. Like we tend to see um, the vast majority of slaves concentrated amongst some very wealthy plantation owners in this Mississippi River Valley. Okay. Slavery became a sticking point during the negotiations over political representation in Congress. Legally, enslaved back black people were considered property, yet Georgia and the Carolinas demanded they be counted as people when it came to calculating the number of representatives. Northern states refused. The two sides came to a compromise. Delegates decided that enslaved person would count as three-fifths of a person. This gave the South more congressional power. In return, they agreed that the slave trade could be banned 20 years later, in 1807. Slavery, though, would continue. So this is going to talk about something that we will um, go into depth in before, more later, but the three-fifths compromise is going to say that enslaved people, even though they're viewed as property, they don't have the right to vote, are still going to be counted in the U.S. for political representation as three-fifths of a person. And this is going to be a big deal because it means that the southern states have more representation in the House of Representatives because of all of their slaves. And we'll talk more about that in depth. Cotton becomes a cash crop. By the early 1800s, cotton had become the top cash crop for the southern economy. Picking and cleaning cotton took a lot of work, however. Cotton production was slow and the supply was limited. In 1794, Eli Whitney invented a machine that sped up the process. A person could clean 10 pounds of cotton a day by hand. The cotton gin could produce 100 pounds of cotton in the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight this part. Um, so one of the main reasons that we see slavery become so prevalent in the United States is just that cotton farming cotton is a lot of work. And so we are gonna see this um, slavery become very important to cotton production in the United States because we need all of the, people needed all of the manpower to um, take all of the little thorns out of the cotton. And even though Eli Whitney invents um, the cotton gin, which will speed up the process, we're actually gonna see slavery increase after that. The production of cotton exploded. The South dependence on it grew. Between 1801 and 1835, U.S. cotton exports swelled from 100,000 bales to more than a million. Cotton made up half of all U.S. exports. These profits benefited industries beyond the South. Manufacturing, banking, and shipping in northern cities prospered as well. Okay, so this is a really important point, right? And the whole point of this article is to tell us that slavery really had a large impact not only on the Southern plantations, but really on the entire United States. It really impacted how the United States developed, okay? So let's go ahead and put a comment in here. And I'm just gonna say slavery impacted not only the Southern plantations, but all of the US benefited from its economic prosperity. Right? And that's just saying that 
all of the United States really saw benefits from using enslaved people, that we are a country that in many ways were built on the back of slaves. Okay, so I'm gonna give everybody a minute or two to get caught up with this. A near, okay, let's keep going. So, a near feudal society developed in the South. And a feudal society is talking about what we had during the Middle Ages, where you have like a king or some sort of nobility on top, and then very poor people who are basically, um, in many ways, enslaved beneath them. At the top was an aristocratic landowners. They wielded most of the economic and political power. Their plantations often had more than a thousand acres. They controlled hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of enslaved black workers. For wealthy landowners, there, was there were clear economic benefits to slavery. They believed that these outweighed any moral doubts about its cruelty. Okay, so that's definitely an important thing, right? For many wealthy landowners, there were clear economic benefits to slavery, meaning they made a lot of money. They believed these outweighed any moral doubts about its cruelty. The abolitionist movement begins. Remember, abolitionist is talking about people who are trying to free enslaved people. So the people who are working to gain freedom, like Harriet Tubman or um, the Underground Railroad. By 1820, slave and free states were growing more and more divided. The abolitionist movement gained influence in Congress. Its supporters called for slavery to be outlawed. Meanwhile, Slave interests were determined to expand slavery in newly forming states. Free states strongly opposed slavery's expansion. By the 1850s, many Southerners believed secession from the United States was necessary. War seemed more and more likely. Southerners knew the North had overwhelming advantages. These included more people, industrial power, and wealth yet most Southerners supported secession. One state after another left the Union in 1860 and 1861. They formed the Confederate States of America. They believed they were preserving their economy and way of life. One is based on slavery. Okay, so if you look back at this, right, we've got some notes, we've highlighted the red vocabulary, vocabulary we don't know, and in yellow, we've highlighted important facts, okay? So you guys can go ahead and skip this little quiz in here. Don't worry about doing that. And what you're going to do is the same close reading on the stories of modern slavery that we have right here. Okay, so highlight in red vocabulary you don't know. Highlight important facts in yellow. And then you can add a couple of notes. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and work on this on your own. I'm going to end the Zoom call. But your homework or your assignment for the last couple minutes of class is to read this second article called The Stories of Modern Slavery. All right. So you guys have a great Monday, and I will see you tomorrow.